All right, Psalm 119. How many of y'all got nervous and thought he was going to read the whole thing? <laughs> when, I, when I texted him the, the Bible reading, I just said Psalm 119, and he was like, whoa. <laughs> I said, all right, just 16 verses. We just did the first two sections, Aleph and Bet. Uh, there's obviously the whole, it goes through the whole Hebrew alphabet, and it's a long chapter, but all of the verses talk about... Uh, the Word of God, basically, it calls it one thing or another, but it's talking about the Word of God. And particularly, I want you to notice verse 11 there, it says, Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. And so the title of the message tonight is Hiding God's Word in Our Hearts. Go over to Joshua 1, if you would. And there's, we're really not coming back to, uh, to that chapter, so you can lose that. Go to Joshua chapter 1. And verse 8 says, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou uh, mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. And so, you know, obviously if we believe that this is God's word, you know, and it's the final authority in all faith and practice, everything we do, everything we believe, we base off of this. Well, then we better read it a lot so that we can have good success. We got to hide it in our hearts. As it said there in Psalm 119, 11, uh, we have to uh, remember it. Uh, we need to, what did it say here? Uh, uh, meditate on it day and night and uh, do all that that is written wherein there's a whole lot of uh, verses in the Bible surrounding this concept of hiding God's Word in our hearts. And I'll take a look at a few more things. Uh, but, you know, first of all, and I got three points to this message, and there's an acronym, okay? R-A-M, RAM. Now, I actually tried to uh, finagle a little bit more of an in-depth, uh, <laughs> you know, just some kind of deep spiritual meaning behind the word RAM, uh, computer memory is RAM, right? Uh, and I was trying to think of, all right, okay, so RAM as opposed to ROM, like RAM has to do with like necessary things that are vital to the computer or something like that. And I got to thinking, I'm just going to leave it for Brother David sometime to make an analogy. <laughs> but uh, it really has nothing to do with the message except it helps you remember uh, the points. And I will talk about it at the end of the message. What I'm going to do is we're going to look at, as I already said a few minutes ago, we're going to look at our scripture of the month. And we should be on verse 2 right now, Isaiah 53, verse 2. And I'm going to show you a way uh, that, you, that we can help, that, that we can memorize that a little easier using some, some principles that are going to be at the very end, at the conclusion of this. Okay, but so here's RAM, all right, R-A-M. Number one hiding God's Word in our heart, first of all, we must read it, okay? Or have it read to us, either way, but have to have to read it. This year, um, I've, I started back pretty seriously on running. Every day in January, I'm, gonna, I'm trying to run at least a mile, and so far it's been great. No injuries or anything like that. <laughs> and uh, and, and uh, what I'm doing, though, is I'll listen to, in my earbuds, I'll listen to the audio Bible. And you say, well, that's not reading it. Well, yeah, but that's getting it in there, okay? And sometimes that's even helpful depending on what your personality is and how you learn better. For me, if I'm out doing something and I'm listening to preaching or Bible reading or whatever, uh, I, I seem to retain that a lot better than if I'm just sitting still in the quiet and I'm trying to commit something to memory. My mind just wanders on all kinds of things. And so for me, it helps to be doing something and hear this in the background. It's like I can focus in on it. Not everybody's that same way. Uh, but the idea is have it read. Read it. You say, well, you know, your, your children can't read yet. Well, you can read it to them. Uh, when you come into the church, you know, and we assemble together, we do a lot of Bible reading here. All right? A lot of times in my message, I'm almost like, yeah, maybe I'm, I'm. Maybe we're doing. We're turning to the Bible and reading too much, and and that's going to be boring. A lot of churches you go to nowadays, they'll they'll just stick with one or two verses, and then they'll tell a lot of stories and all that. I'm not saying that's entirely wrong, but the reason they do that is because if you say, take somebody to uh, a, the, a Bible verse and you read, you know, the whole chapter. You know, sometimes it wears people out if they're not used to reading it. They're not used to the, the, the way that the, the reading of the King James Bible is. Uh, not that any other version would be better, even if you, you know, even if it wasn't for the fact that this is the inspired word of God. 
doesn't matter. Whatever version out there, if you tried to read that long settings of it, it wouldn't. Uh, I mean, it does matter. But <laughs> what I'm saying is, uh, it, you know, if you try to read that, it would still be difficult. It's kind of hard to just sit there and listen to that. So for, for an example, I preached yesterday what I thought <clears throat> just here's just the mind of a preacher. Okay. I thought was going to be an interesting message. It was like the top five, like verses in the Bible. My the ones that I rank as the top five, like the stupidest things that people say in the Bible, and it sounded like a great idea. Written on paper sounds great. I felt like during the message I lost people. Like there wasn't all it wasn't all that interesting. Uh, people were kind of zoning out a little bit. Maybe I wasn't exciting enough or whatever. But you know, one of the things is each one of those five um, points. I took them to that chat to that that verse and we read the story. And I realized, thinking back, like the reason why it's just hard to stay focused because there's lots of Bible reading. But you know what? Don't let that stop you from reading the Bible. Don't let that stop you if you're a preacher from using the word of God because that's where the power of God is, right? And so this is what we got to do is apply God's word to our, it's got to be read. So uh, so the first thing we need to do is just to read it. Over and over, the Bible says, uh, let's, let's just look at a couple examples. Go to Matthew. Over and over, Jesus, whenever he was on, began his public ministry on earth, uh, he kept referring to the scripture that was written, the Old Testament, and he keeps referring to it. And for instance, look at Matthew chapter 12, verse 3. And over and over, I'm just going to give you a handful, but he says this a lot of times. But he said unto them, have ye not read what David did? And he tells them this story, like, haven't you read this? Didn't you grow up reading these stories? You know, haven't you read this every uh, every year? You know, every year that you've been alive, you've read this over and over and over again. That's kind of what I have, I think, in my mind. A lot easier easier for us today to have a copy of the Word of God than it was for them in that day. But it was important. Everybody grew up knowing the Bible, read, having it read to them and reading it. And he says, have you not read? And of course, these were the, uh, a lot of times he's talking to the spiritual leaders. Look at verse 5 of the same, uh, same chapter. Or have you not read in the law? How that on the Sabbath day? And so, uh, you know, haven't you read this? Haven't you read that? Look at chapter 19. Verse 4, And he answered and said unto them, Have you not read that he which made them in the beginning made them male and female? Hey, a lot of people need to read the Bible when it comes to that, right? Uh, have you not read? You know, the, what does the Bible say? What does God's Word say? He gave it to us. All we got to do is read it. Verse, uh, uh, chapter 22, verse 31. And we'll just stop with this one, but you get the idea. He says, But as touching the resurrection of the dead, have ye not read that which was spoken unto God uh, unto you by God, saying, and then uh, and then he talks about that. So it was important to Jesus that we read the Bible or have it read to us. That's that's where we're gonna start with when it comes to understanding uh, the scripture. Look at Joshua chapter eight. You know. One thing, one, one way it needs to be read, as is what I'm saying here, is in church. In a church setting, when there's the preaching of the Word of God, if you ever sit through a sermon and it's just all man's ideas and there's no scripture to back up what he's saying, that's a dangerous situation. That's where a lot of false doctrine comes from and that's where a lot of bad, uh, bad thoughts come from because they're not keeping it tempered by looking at the Word of God. Joshua chapter 8 and go to verse 30. He says, Then Joshua built an altar unto the Lord God of Israel in Mount Ebal, as Moses, uh, the servant of the Lord, I'm sorry, uh, commanded the children of Israel, as it is written in the book of the law of Moses, an altar of whom stones uh, over which no man hath lifted up any iron, and they offer them burnt offerings unto the Lord and sacrifice peace offerings. And he wrote there upon the stone a copy of the law of Moses, uh, which he wrote in the presence of the children of Israel. Can you imagine? Again, it's so easy for us nowadays. We have the Word of God, but can you imagine if you needed, if you wanted to have a copy of the Word of God, you had to go borrow it from somebody else or get the copy in the church or whatever and, and write it down so that you would have a copy. Uh, you know, and then here they're writing it on stone tablets. And so you're talking about a major undertaking to be able to do that. And so here, 
in, in order to read the Bible to this whole assembly, he had to have a copy of the Bible. And so he wrote it. And all Israel and their elders and officers and their judges stood on this side of the ark and on that side before the priests of the Levites who bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord, as well as the stranger and he that was born among them, half of them over against Mount uh, Gerizim and half over against uh, Mount Ebal, as Moses, the servant of the Lord, had commanded before that they should bless the people of Israel. And afterward, he read all the words of the law, the blessings and the cursings, uh, according to all that is written in the book of the law. There was not a word of all their, uh, all that Moses commanded, which Joshua read, not before all the congregation of Israel, with the women and the little ones and the strangers that were com com conversant among them. Okay, so you hear, see here a setting. I know this is not necessarily a New Testament church setting, but you see a setting where you had everybody, the old men, you know, the young men, the women, the children, the servants, the, I mean, everybody met together in an assembly and they all heard the Bible read together. And I think that's important for churches to do that and not to lose sight of that or not to be like, well, you know, it's going to be too boring and you're not going to be able to keep people's attentions. Well, they need to learn. And the more they hear it read to them and the more they uh, read it themselves at home, the more parents read to their children and all that, the more they understand the vernacular and it becomes uh, a little easier. In fact, I would go so far as to say if you're homeschooling, I'm not telling you to do this. There's a lot of good curriculum out there, and we uh, use a curric curriculum. But I would say that you could probably teach the basics of every subject, you know, the basics of it. You could probably teach it straight from the Bible. You know, math, yeah, you can find some verses in there <laughs> to use some math, and uh, you can find all those things, a little bit of history and all that. Uh, the Bible is a great book for kids to, to be educated, to, to learn. In fact, if you're learning an, another language, you know, start reading the Bible in that language and that'll help you there. Uh, you know, I think that it's, it is something that we need to discipline ourselves to, to be. Everybody does, but especially those in the church who are disciples of the Lord who meet together, we need to be applying the word of God uh, to our hearts. Again, Nehemiah chapter eight, very similar. So this is after uh, after they go back into the land. So you have uh, uh, after the Chronicles, like the end of Chronicles is the time where they go into Babylonian captivity, which is where a lot of the prophets are uh, written during that time. And then after the Chronicles, you get to Ezra and you get to Nehemiah, which has to do with when, when they went back into the land. Okay, so after a long time and 70 years in captivity, now they're going into the land. They're, start, they're trying to get back to, uh, to do things the way that it was written in the Word of God and all that. So Nehemiah chapter 8 says, These are now the chief of their fathers, and this is the genealogy of them that went up with me from Babylon in the reign of Artaxerxes the king, of the sons of Phinehas, Gershom of the sons of Ithamar, Daniel of the sons of, da uh, of David, uh, Hetush of the sons of she Shechaniah, of the sons of Peresh, Zechariah, and with him were reckoned by the genealogy of the males 150. Of the sons of, I mean, none of this is, is super <laughs> important to what I'm saying. So let's skip down to verse 8. Uh, uh, let's see, we've got to go farther than that. Let's see. Let's go to, and what was I even reading the right place? Nehemiah chapter 8, 1 through... Oh, what did I do? That's not right. I'm glad I didn't just keep on reading. Okay, uh, and so they meet together. Oh, come on, where's the famous verse where they're, they're meeting and there's a pulpit of wood? Pulpit of wood? Hey, this is a good verse. We need to find it. <laughs> I'm not sure what I did there anyway. Oh, are you guys, was I just, what I was reading is not what you were reading. Am I right? Because I was in Ezra. You're supposed to be in Nehemiah. Okay. Why didn't somebody stop me? And all the people gathered themselves together as one man into the street that was before the water gate. And they spoke unto Ezra the scribe to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had commanded to Israel. 
And Ezra the priest brought the law before the congregation, both of men and women, and all that could hear with understanding upon the first day of the seventh month. And he read therein before the street that was before the water gate from the morning until midday, before the men and the women and those that could understand, and the ears of all the people were attentive unto the book of the law. And Ezra the scribe stood upon the pulpit of wood, uh, he stood up on the pulpit. No, that pulpit was actually what <laughs> he stood down there. But I mean, you know, you could stand up on the podium too. Uh, and Ezra, uh, where was I? Let's go to verse 5. And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people, for he was above all the people. And when he opened it, all the people stood up. And Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God. And all the people answered, Amen, Amen, with lifting up their hands, and they bowed their heads and worshiped the Lord with their faces to the ground. So can you imagine if I got up and said, all right, here's what we're going to do today, guys. I'm going to read from morning until midday, you know. <laughs> we're going to read, we're going to eat some breakfast, and then I'm just going to read until it's lunchtime. We're just going to read the Bible. And of course, if you read the context, he did explain, he did give the sense of it. So he did explain what it was he was reading and the parts that were hard to understand or whatever. But, you know, this is just, you talk about expository preaching, it's just like, Read a few verses, give the sense of it. Read a few more verses from morning until midday. Maybe that's what Paul was doing whenever Eutychus fell out of the window, <laughs> fell asleep out of the window. Uh, that's a long, and he he went, he went till midnight. Okay, so uh, so here the Bible, you know, makes it pretty clear. And when they got together with, and I, you say, well, this is Old Testament, but they got together. They read the Word of God, and it was very important. I think it's important for us to read the Bible in churches. And eventually, after years and years of hearing preaching and preaching and preaching, now, if you're not faithful to church, you'll miss it, but for years and years of hearing that preach, and the preacher keeps quoting some of the same verses over and over again, it gets into your head. And so you're learning these, these things, and you're understanding the sense of it, and you're hiding them in your heart. That's the first step, is reading it. Okay, that's the R. Uh, look at, this is just an extra little tip here for you. Uh, es Esther chapter 6. It's just one book over, but it's taking me a while to get there. <laughs> Esther chapter 6. So here's a little tip, all right? If you can't sleep at night, go to the book of Chronicles. <laughs> On that night, could not the king sleep? And he commanded to the kings, and they brought uh, the, the book of the record of the Chronicles. And it was found written that Mordecai, so he began reading that at some point he had somebody come and read to him the book of the Chronicles. So that if you ever have a hard time sleeping, you know, just ask your... Uh, ask somebody in the house to come read to you. Just bring out the book of Chronicles. Go to the, where they have a list of all the names. You'll fall asleep for sure. And having said that, you know, you say, well, I don't want to, you know, if I read my Bible early in the morning or at night or whatever, I doze off and I go to sleep. And, you know, that seems disrespectful. Well, number one, God understands. I mean, I don't think he's going to be mad at you. Number two, that's a pretty good way to go to sleep. You know, rather than watching TV and going straight to bed, hide God's word in your heart. And when you go, you, you go to sleep, you wake up, you know, man, that's good. That's good. Uh, uh, that's a good thing to be in your heart and in your mind is the word of God. Same as prayer. You know, if you fall asleep praying to God, I mean, just something about that. You wake up and you're. It's almost like, wait, where did I leave off? <laughs> okay. Uh, anyway, so uh, let's go to the next point. All right. So R was read it. A is apply it. Uh, James one twenty two says, B. Uh, but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. It's not enough to just to hear it, whether you're in the church hearing it read, whether you're at home reading it. And by the way, we do need to read it on our, on our own as well. Personal spiritual development, uh, your relationship with the Lord will grow immensely if you're reading the Bible regularly on your own. <clears throat> but we also have to apply it. God's word is going to do little good for you if you don't apply it uh, to your heart, to your life. Now, the Bible, uh, I've preached on this before, talked about the Bible uses a lot of analogies about the Word of God. And uh, it's, it's pretty neat if you think about the different uh, analogies it uses. It uses a seed. Okay, the Bible is that, like a seed. Now, think about what a seed does. A seed goes to the ground and it, and it begins to grow. That's a, it's it's going to have an effect on that soil. It's going to have an effect on you know, those around it because uh, it's a seed. And God's Word needs to be hidden in our heart. And so that it can, can begin to change our life, you know. And a person, uh, how about you preaching the gospel, right? You're, you're showing these verses from the Bible, but if they don't apply it to their own heart, they're not going to get saved. They have to understand what 
that means that all are sinners. What that means that God sent his son, you know, they have to apply it to their own life and say, well, I'm a sinner. I need to have, you know, they have to apply it. The Bible has to affect us. The Bible described, is described, the word of God is described as a mirror or the glass is what the Bible says. A mirror that shows a reflection, right? You want to see yourself, you start reading these stories. I read that message yesterday about stupid things that people say. You can see yourself on all, <laughs> all those things. Like, you know, I love that part where uh, where Hannah's husband, I always forget him, Al- Alcana, it says, like, you know, here she's grieving because she can't have children. He's like, well, aren't, aren't I like 10 sons? <laughs> and I'm like, that's just such a man thing to do. Like, I kind of could see it where I might say that one time to my wife, like, aren't I as good as 10 sons? And she'd be like, no, dummy. <laughs> but, uh, uh, but you know, you read the Bible and you're like, I can see this is like mankind is human, humankind right here, sinful flesh, this is sinful nature. We all got it. And so it's like a, it's like a mirror and we need to look at that and let it shine on us so that we don't, the, that, that application is saying, you know, that somebody might look and behold their face in a natural glass and then walk away and forget what they, they just saw a minute ago. Hey, your hair sticking up and you got some, uh, some sleep on your eyes and some drool coming down for you in the morning. You know what I mean? And then you just like go and forget that you saw that image in the mirror. And wonder why the rest of the day everybody's looking at you funny. Well, when you read God's word, let it affect your heart and let it show you that that's who you are and you need to change and you need to be what God wants you to be. This is the purpose of reading the Bible. This is the purpose of hiding it in our hearts. What did you, uh, David say in Psalm 119, 11? He said, uh, I, you know, he's, I've hidden the word in my heart that I might not sin against God. It has to have an effect on us or else not doing us any good. In fact, I would say this. If you memorize just the, the sense of what the Bible's saying, like you don't necessarily have to memorize word for word all these things. It's good. I think it's helpful to, to memorize the scripture accurately. But if you can at least get the principle, the concept that you can apply to your heart, it'll go a long ways. And then you can work on defining that and finding out all the, uh, the little details of the scripture that you're missing. Okay, so uh, uh, also it's described as a light or a lamp. It's going to help guide your path in, in life and, and show you where to go and show you what dangers are ahead of you, you know, what to expect. We know by reading the Bible, the, the craftiness of Satan. We know what he's going to bring our way and we know how to defeat him by the scripture, you know, and we'll get to that part in a minute. Uh, the Bible is described as a hammer, right? It, it's, it, what's a hammer do? It crushes things and uh, the Bible will crush you uh, it'll step on your toes, okay? Uh, the Bible is described as a sword or a two-edged sword. And, uh, and, and so we need to use that. Not only use that on offensively, but defensively. It'll, it'll, it'll cut you too. It'll cut right to the heart. Hebrew, Hebrews 4.12 says, For the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints of the marrow, and is the discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And so we need to apply God's Word to our hearts. I love to watch new believers, like new converts just recently got saved, or uh, maybe just maybe they've been saved a while, but they just recently got into it and started reading their Bible, and to see the excitement, and to see like every time they talk to you about, like, I was reading in the Bible, and I saw this, or something happens in their life, and it's like, well, it's just like the Bible says. Now, if you've been a Christian for a long time, you, you probably talk like that on a regular basis, but to see the excitement in a new believer who's learning these things and growing, and it's because they're, they're hiding God's Word in their heart. They're learning it for the first time, and, they're, and, they're, and, they're, and it's just there. It's, on their, it's in their memory, and, uh, and we need to, uh, to embrace that. So read it, apply it, and then we come to the M, which is memorize it. Now, go to Matthew chapter 4. I talked about how to defeat Satan. Uh, the Bible gives us a great example. When temptation comes, Satan tries to tempt us or bring trials in our life, which is another form of temptation. Uh, the Bible gives us the answer. Jesus showed us what to do. And you'll find in every t- temptation that Satan threw out to Jesus, how did he combat him? He, he quoted to him scripture. From the Bible. Now, Satan knows the scripture, and so he tried to quote some back, but Jesus, uh, obviously being the Word of God himself, knew how to, uh, he knew, you know, how to defeat Satan. And so, this is even after 40 days of no food and, and just weariness, no sleep, 
and uh, he, he is able to quote scripture. Look at Matthew 4, 1. It says, Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hungered. And when the tempter came, uh, came to him and said, If thou be the Son of God, command these stones be made to bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. In verse 7 he says, Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Verse 10, Then Jesus said unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord uh, thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. So when Satan is, you know, throwing his darts at you, when Satan is trying to deceive you, trying to get you to fall, trying to turn you against your brother, I mean, whatever it is, all the craftiness of Satan, you know, we can defeat him by remembering the Scripture. And it's not, you're not going to remember it if it hasn't been read to you. You're not going to remember it if you haven't actually applied it to yourself. And then, uh, and then the, that final way to hide it in your heart is to, act, is to literally memorize it. You might not always have a Bible in your hand where you are. Uh, around, you know, nowadays, uh, pretty much everybody's got a, f uh, a Bible in their pocket, you know, like all, all day long. If you need to look up a scripture, you can probably just get your cell phone out and look at it. But that's not always the case. You might not have it in other parts of the world. Uh, you know, there might be people that don't have access to it like that, and they have to work harder at memorizing it. Because, you know, they might not always be able to go look back at the source, but they have, uh, have it memorized. And we, take, we don't want to uh, take that for granted uh, that, it's, that it's so easy for us to just, you know, rely on other sources, uh, other people. We need to memorize God's Word. Not only because, hey, there might be a time where we need that and it needs to be in our mind and in our heart so the Holy Spirit can bring that to, to memory at the, time, at, the, at the right time, you know, bring it to, bring it to the front of our mind. Uh, not only that, but just memorizing it is a way to, to meditate on it. It's a way to hide it in your heart and do all these things like Joshua said. You know, you're going to have great success if you're actually keeping the commandment in your heart and you're doing these things. Uh, it's going to bring prosperity. And I'm not talking about monetary or anything like that. I'm just saying as far as being right with God, knowing His will, doing what His Word says to do, obviously you have to know it. You have to memorize it and walk in uh, those ways. Uh, another verse is Proverbs 3, 1 through 3. And in there he says, write it on the table of thine heart. Okay. Uh, this, uh, this is, you know, Solomon's particularly talking about his words, but, but it's talking about the scripture in general. Hide it in, uh, I mean, hide it in your heart. Write it on the table of thine heart. So we have to get it from being just a concept to actually being in our, in our memory. Uh, you have to hear it, read it, have it read to you, whatever, and then understand the concept and then just commit that to memory. And here's a very, very important thing, and, and I'm going to spend a little bit of time right after this talking about how to memorize, give you some tips on how to memorize. But here is a very important thing that you're going to find out. If you memorize a scripture right now, if we just crammed, and hopefully you will know a couple scriptures after this conclusion, uh, and then you never quoted it again, in about a week or two weeks, you'd forget it. Maybe less than that. Maybe tomorrow you'd be like, what was that verse? I, I, mem I memorized it. And then you'll forget it. And so, but then there's other verses. If someone said, hey, quote John 3, 16, boom, you've got it. Because, you know, it's, it's been hidden in a, in a part of your mind. I don't understand the science behind all this. It's been hidden in this part of your mind that it's deep, buried, like you can bring it up at any moment. But the stuff that you just learned just recently in that short-term memory, you're going to lose that. It's going to be gone and you're going to forget it. And so you've got to get it from your short-term memory to your long-term memory. And this is uh, uh, really important. Let me give you a couple tips here on, uh, on memorizing the Bible. And then we'll, we'll close with this after I give you a few tips. I mean, don't get too excited. It'll still be a few minutes. <laughs> but, uh, uh, okay, I'm, here's a few tips. Number one. The majority of the Bible verses that I have committed to memory in my mind, I memorized them because there was some incentive. Okay, I was in vacation Bible school, or I was in, uh, you know, a camp, or I was at, you know, where I got saved at an Awana's uh, Awana program or whatever. And if you if you memorize enough scripture, you got some kind of award. I don't remember what it was uh, for memorizing so many verses. So kids are easily, uh, you know 
in, uh, they're easily convinced to memorize scripture if they get something from it, right? So you say, hey, if you memorize 10 verses, you know, you're going to get this little prize. You'll get to get something out of the treasure chest or whatever. They're more likely to memorize it because there's like an incentive to it. And so this is why a while back, you know, I, I, I toyed with the idea of doing some gift cards. And we did do that for a little while. And I might bring something like that back in time. Uh, but you can understand where there's like, some, it's hard to just convince yourself that you just want to memorize a lot of scripture. But we need to. We need to make it a habit. And, uh, and some, like I said, some things will eventually get in your mind just because you heard it quoted so many times. But we need to make an effort. And, and, you know, a lot of times children learn because there's some incentive. And so, uh, you know, however you can apply that in your life to help you out, we could certainly apply it here. We could start trying to even just little in just little ways to get people to say, OK, well, I got to memorize so many verses. Um, you know, now I think here's one incentive. This is why we started doing it, where I'm going to just start every week. Just bring it out and say, who has last week's memorized? And we're going to quote it together. And if, and if I say, who's got it? I know for me it's incentive because I don't want to get up here week after week and look foolish because I didn't <laughs> memorize it. And for you guys, maybe you're like, oh, he's going to ask me again. And so I need to have, that's a little bit of incentive too. But, uh, but it's true. Like we're going to do a lot better memorizing if there's some kind of incentive involved. And so we'll work on that a little bit. And uh, maybe you can, in your own life you can find some some way of using, um, getting some incentive for the rest of your family or for yourself or whatever. Uh, how about singing? Singing really helps us learn. And sometimes, okay, so here's an example. S the Sunday we sang uh, a, a psalm. And what is that, like the maybe the third time we've sung it here? Something like that. And I certainly don't have it committed to memory from those three times. Uh, and it's like, it's hard sometimes to fit all the songs that don't, they don't rhyme in the right places and all that stuff. So sometimes it's hard to fit that into a song. So when you first try to sing that song, you first read it, you're like, I'm never going to memorize that. Well, guess what we did Monday, Monday at our house, all of a sudden somebody had that tune in their head and they were humming that. And then little bits of the, of the phrases from that song were coming to mind. And that's just with no work, like no effort or trying to memorize the song or anything, but just by a couple times, just singing it through song. It's amazing what songs will do to help you memorize. And so there's a lot of songs that, that I, a lot of verses that I've learned through songs. You gotta be careful Sometimes the song's like a little stretch from the King James. <laughs> it's just like not even really, uh, you know, they just took a lot of liberty or whatever. Uh, but if it's a word for word thing and you memorize that through song, uh, you know, that, that, that'll, that'll really help. Uh, so, uh, so how many times, like I always think about the ABCs, like when you're a kid, you learn the ABCs through a song. And so how many to this day, like if, if, if you're trying to find out where, you know, what letter P comes after, I mean, some of y'all might just have it right down. Others are like, L -M -N -O. okay, it comes after O, <laughs> right? And in your song, you're singing, you, I mean, in your head, you're singing the song, even to this day, probably. So a lot of, I do that with the books of the Bible sometimes. I'll, I'll be singing a little song as I'm going, not so much a song now, I kind of have it, just the flow of the way that the words sound, the, the books sound together. And you just got to go through it in your head and, and, and get all those. So, uh, so singing or associations, okay? Uh, sometimes it's not necessarily the singing, but there's a certain associations in your head. Probably a lot of stuff you've memorized is because there's some little trick and you might not even, even memorizing people's names. You know, if you see somebody and at first it might seem a little weird, but you see somebody and immediately like the way that you remember their name is there's some kind of association. How many of y'all do that? I mean, that's a, that's a little trick that they teach you if you, if you take a class on it or something, which I never have, but, uh, but it makes sense. Like you associate that, uh, an example is earlier, we were talking about Miss, Miss Christina, uh, <laughs> Braden brought back in my mind how I used to call her Cynthia. And the reason why is because I made an association to learn her name. I was like, oh, that's just like my sister. But then later on, I forgot it was my sister. And I was like, oh, her name's just like, I think it's my mom. And so I started calling her Cynthia. Then I was like, wait, it's not Cynthia. It's Christina because that's like my sister. See how I made the association. So you can do little things like that. Let me give you a couple examples before we go to Isaiah 53. Let's go to 2 Timothy 3.15. 2 Timothy 3.15.
Now, I learned this verse by an association. It was actually kind of an acronym. All right. And so, I mean, how many of you guys already have this word for word memorized? You can you could quote 2 Timothy 3.15 right now. I mean, 16. Sorry. Okay, good. You can. Okay. Uh, some people get a little lost. Okay, because, you know, you got the first bit. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable. And then you're like, oh, what is there's a list? It's profitable for instruction and correction. And uh, so somewhere in Bible school, someone taught me this little little trick. Of course, in school, sometimes in Bible college, sometimes like the, you know, one of your tests might be like memorizing a scripture word for word. And so you'd have to cram for the test <laughs> until you found all these little tricks ways to memorize this. So someone taught me this. They said, you know, oh, Dr. C-I-R. Now that might even sound like, well, how am I going to memorize that? Well, that's a lot easier to memorize. You know, it's Dr. C-I-R. You kind of see that in your head and you think about Dr. C-I-R. So all doctrine and reproof and correction and instruction in righteousness, right? Uh, did I get it all right? So that's Dr. C-I-R, that's what, that's what helps me memorize it. A lot of scripture that you're going to memorize is probably going to be some through some association like that. Look at Philippians 4, 8. I struggled this, I struggled with this one for a long time. <clears throat> I still mix it up sometimes, but if I think about it, I can get this one. It says, finally, brethren... Whatsoever things are, and then there's this list, true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, uh, are, 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 whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. And you're like, well, how do I remember all those little lists of, uh, of things? Well, you know, I think it was an article I read sometime that was, that it was just real briefly giving you a way to help re remember that. And, uh, you know, I'm not... Again, like I said, if I don't think it through, sometimes I still get a little, a little iffy on that. But back whenever I read that, when I got done reading the article, I had the verse memorized with no, with no work at all. And uh, what they were doing is they were saying, okay, first thing you remember is this, true and honest. Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest. Okay, true and honest, they go together, right? And the other was uh, uh, just pure lovely. Like for some reason that sticks in my, that stuck in my head, like it's just pure lovely, you know? So whatsoever things are uh, 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 pure, whatsoever things are lovely. And so, uh, you know, that helped me get a little bit farther on that. And then of, of good report, I mean, you can just kind of start piecing things together. But uh, just these are little tips, okay? So, you know, having an incentive, of course, is going to help you get started learning songs or writing songs or making associations, those kind of things. Anything you're memorizing is going uh, to help you. Now... Here's another uh, tip. Go to Isaiah 53. Now we'll see what we can do here. We'll use, I'll use this as an example. We won't necessarily have it all memorized, but we'll see what we can do on this. <clears throat> so I tell you what, just so far, just, you know, just thinking of a way to, uh, to, to get some kind of association here, let's, let's look at that. Now, I already preached a message a while back where we went through Isaiah 53. And the first thing I brought up is that, uh, you know, obviously there's, there's, there's doubt here. There's going to be a rejection of, uh, of Jesus. Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord uh, given? I mean, revealed, sorry. And, <laughs> and uh, I didn't say I got it perfect. But you understand, this is the idea. Like, there's this question. Like, who has, who has believed our report? Okay. Now... And then I talked about, well, now it's going to show like why they didn't, why they don't believe Jesus whenever he came, why they, why they rejected him. Okay. And it was because there was nothing, there was nothing wonderful, magnificent in his just natural appearance. Okay. So the first thing to remember here is he's going to talk about uh, a plant. Okay. Uh, so, so he shall grow up before him as a tender plant. Now the next parts on here that to remember these kind of key words is uh, a, a root. Okay. So what grows? He shall grow up before him. What's going to grow? The plant and the root. All right. I don't know if that makes sense, but that can help you and understand that first little section by thinking about he shall grow up before him as a tender plant 
and as a root. Now, the tender and the dry ground is talking about the fact that they didn't they didn't believe Jesus because He's like a tender plant. You can pull a tender plant out of the ground, no problem, no effort at all. It's tender, it's young, and just it's nothing, you know. And he was a uh, like a root in a dry ground. Like you can just pull that out, no problem. And that's how he was. And so you're thinking about he grow, plant, root, you know, and then you understand the tender plant, root in the dry ground. That first section, just with that little association in your mind, with a little bit of work, you know, it starts to make sense and it's easier to memorize and come to you. Okay, and then it says, of course, he has no, he had no form nor comeliness. So it's talking about his his physical appearance. You know, there's no form that you can look at, no beauty that you can you can see. And so, it doesn't take very long to get that kind of a big verse. Obviously, it's it, I mean, it's like twice as long as verse one. Smaller parts, uh, you know, you can you can kind of see where it'd be easier to fit together in your mind. Now, let me tell you a, a system. Okay. In this system, I actually got from Pastor Anderson. I, I, I found it online. It took me a little bit to find it because a lot of his stuff gets gets removed. But he had given something that way back when he started the church, he was really big. I think he still is, but he was really big back then at memorizing large portions of the Bible. And I watched this video where I was like, man, you know, I want to be able to learn to read the Bible like that. And of course, he didn't get all this from, you know, just off the top of his head. He read some different books that taught you how to memorize scripture, and then he applied it. And these are some, some things that work for him. And so it's, it has stuck with me, although I, I don't spend a lot of time at it. If I did, these, these things will work, I guarantee. And so uh, I think Sharice still uses some of those methods because we watched that video uh, together. And, and when you're trying to memorize the Bible, these, these things really help. So let me give you a couple little tips here uh, that I learned from, from him. Number one, write it out. Now, this is something that I've always known. Yeah, you know, you could, you could copy it from the Bible. You could put it on a printer, copy it, or you could type it out, right? I guess that typing out would be like kind of like writing it out. But I'm telling you, when you actually write something out by hand, it seems like it, you just mem- remember it a little bit better. And so if you're setting out to write, to, to, to memorize something, I, say, I think the good step would get like some three by five index cards or something like that and just purpose in your mind, say, I'm going to write all the words out to this verse. That alone is going to get you pretty, pretty far down the road in memorizing something because you, you've thought about it and, you, and you've looked at it and you've written it out, you know, little bit by bit. And so the first thing is to write that out. Okay. And then the second part is, and this is, again, something that they taught us in Bible college. And so it lines up right with what he was teaching. He would get the next card out the day and his job or whatever, he'd pull that out and look at the index card. But here's what he said that this, this helped me a lot. It sounds so simple, but it, like too good to be true kind of thing, but it really works. He divided them up into really, really small portions. Instead of trying to memorize like a whole phrase or something like that and repeat it over and over, Really small portions, okay? So, for he shall grow up, for he shall grow up, for he shall grow up. And you know, you can quote that even out loud, like as long as you're not in the store or something like that, people looking at you funny. <laughs> but if you're mowing the yard or you're, you know, uh, doing something, you could just quote that out loud, for he shall grow up, for he shall grow up, for he shall grow up, for he shall grow up. And you quote that to yourself out loud enough times, you're in the car driving, you know, Again, people driving by might think you look funny, but for he shall grow up, for he shall grow up, for he shall grow up, for he shall grow up. And eventually you say that so many times, that's kind of like embedded in your mind. Again, short term, you're going to lose it eventually, but it's embedded in your mind for a little while. So you move on to the next part and you got the, the index card. You can either write the either little sections on there or you can just read, mark little sections off of it while you're reading off the index card. Uh, so he shall grow up. Before him, he shall grow up before him. He shall grow up before him, for he shall grow up before him as a tender plant. You know, before him as a tender plant. He shall grow up before him as a tender plant, as a tender plant. As a t- I mean, whatever, however you're going to replete that. But I'm just doing it like real, real briefly. I'm talking about like 500 times, quoting it just over and over and over for a long time. And then uh, eventually your, your mind knows how to remember those things, even if they're out of order. It's kind of like putting together a puzzle you know, and you got all these little pieces. It's like your mind can still memorize these little bits. And then later on, you can put them all together a lot easier, but you've memorized it by just repetition, repetition, repetition. That is the, that every person that you talk to or that you read after 
who is big time into memorization, they're either going to use associate, some kind of association. I heard this one plan and I never could get it in my head very well. But I heard this one plan that had to do with like, you, vis you visualize yourself going into a, anybody ever heard this method? You visualize yourself going into a house, right? And the first door is, is this. And, and so you, you put that phrase or that word or whatever on the door. And then when you go in the door, you're using something that you know, like at my house, if I open the door, first thing I'm going to see is this, uh, this dresser over here. So then that dresser, you, you put this other phrase or whatever. I don't know. It was too much for me when I was trying to read that. I, I was like, you know, what? I'm just going to do the repetition. <laughs> Repetition method. But I do know this, uh, you know, I've done little things like, you remember that game? Uh, I don't know. There's probably lots of different versions, but Simon Says, I think was what it was called when I was, and it's like it shows a red thing and then you push the red one and then it goes like red, green. So you go red, green, red, green, yellow. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, uh, and I never, after a while, it's just like, I can't remember. That was too much to remember. And so one time I started like thinking of, you know, I have this idea. Instead of, uh, instead of memorizing the color pattern, I have to go through that in my mind all the time. I'm going to break it down. And so what I would do is I would take the first like R, you know, for red, G for green, B for blue. And then I would think of a word and I begin to make these like crazy stories in my head using those. Now you, you got to <laughs> kind of have to have a good vocabulary, I guess, but which I don't. <laughs> but anyway, and I found that I was going like, you know, five times farther than what I was going, just trying to memorize numbers because I was telling this little story in my head. So there, what I'm saying is that there are tricks you can, you can, you can force yourself to memorize, but repetition is going to be key. Uh, just repeat over and over and over. And there's, you got time through the day, wherever you can do it, if you apply yourself. Okay. So write it out, then repeat portions of that over and over and over and over. And then eventually you can start putting those together and then you recite it out loud. Maybe have a friend or a family member and say, hey, let, can I quote this uh, chapter to you or whatever? And then you go down. I've seen people in this room uh, do that with each other and uh, it really helps. I remember one time we were hiking on a trail and brother Justin was just like, hey, can I quote First Peter to you? And so while we're hiking on the trail, he's just quoting First Peter. I'm like, man, this is this is the way you're supposed to, this is fellowship, right? We're learning the word of God together and helping each other out. But recite it out, to out loud to somebody, and that will uh, help you, obviously, once you've said it, you've thought it in your mind, you've said it out loud, uh, then, you, then you have it. But here is the problem. Like I said, if you get it down and you say, oh, great, I just quoted it to somebody, I got it memorized, I just memorized a chapter. Well, that is true. You did memorize it, but you wake up tomorrow, and if you don't quote it, you know, Maybe the next day you've forgotten it. You can't remember. Maybe a week goes by and you've forgotten it. So here's what that method that Pastor Anderson was talking about. He said uh, he would quote it every day for a week. So he, if he's trying to get, once he has a chapter memorized, he would quote that whole chapter every day for a week. But then the problem was, if you want to memorize another chapter, what are you going to memorize? Are you going to quote both of those chapters together? Eventually, you're going to be trying to memorize the whole Bible or New Testament or whatever. You can't quote the New Testament every day. And so here's what he did. He said, uh, so the every day he would, he would quote that chapter for one week. And then he would just quote it once a week for a month. And then he quote it... Uh, yeah, just, just once a month from here on out until it's like completely in your mind. Because there are some things you won't lose. I, I mean, it's you've moved it from that front to the back of your memory where it's long term. And so, you know, that's the part. I think that's the key to retaining is you're going to have to do it every day and then say, okay, I can't just continue to do this every day. I've got to now wait, let my mind forget it a little bit, and then a week come back and try to do it again. And you'll probably be a little rusty. You might, you know, it might really get depressed a little bit when you have to memorize it all over again <laughs> but then this time it might stay right next week you'll say it and then the week after you say it, and then like you only have to do it like once a month and then it's permanently uh in in your head hopefully <laughs> all right so uh so anyway those are just some little tips i want to give you but bottom line is at the very least 
read it, read it, read it, read it over and over. Hear it preached. You know, when I preach, I'm going to try to use a lot of scriptures. When the other guys here preach, I know they use a lot of scripture. And it's good. We need to hear the scripture. Even if it's hard to focus and you're kind of tuning the preacher out or whatever, it's still getting in there. You know, it, you'd be surprised. You see, well, the little children, they don't understand. You, you'd be surprised what's getting into a child's mind. My uh, wife told me that the other day she was, uh, she, I think Thursday, she was in the mother baby room, and I think that Katya was as well. Yeah, it was Katya, and she said that they were back there, and and, and of course back there they've got the audio record of what's what I'm saying right now. Is they, they can hear it, and so she was saying that in that sermon I made it I made a reference to Viviana, and I was talking about how she communicates. And uh, I don't remember exactly all the words that I said or what she said that Katya, how she responded. But she said, like, while she was playing and I started talking about Viviana, she all of a sudden looked up and she looked over at Viviana. And it was like, he's talking about you. <laughs> right? And it was just a re reminder that kids, even though they're tuning out, even though you don't think they're paying attention, there's things that are getting in there. And there's, you know, and little things they're going to remember You'll be at home and all of a sudden they'll say, hey, remember when the preacher said this or that? And uh, it's probably going to be uh, something funny or where, where I messed up or I dropped something or whatever. But hey, they're remembering. <laughs> they're getting something. <laughs> so uh, uh, I hope this helps. But the main idea is read it, apply it, and then do the best you can to memorize it. Some of it will just be memorized naturally over the years. Uh, but you could apply these to your heart, um, I mean, to your, to your own life and hide God's word in your heart. Write it on the table of your heart. Let's pray. Father, we do pray uh, that you'll help us. Give us uh, the ability to love your word more and to retain it. And uh, Lord, help us, if nothing else, just to read it over and over and uh, listen to it read or what, whatever the case. But we do want to hide, our, hide your word in our hearts. I pray you help us. Give us the strength to do that, the ability to do that. And I pray that you will uh, help us to apply it so that we will not sin whenever we think about uh, what the Bible says concerning different things uh, that we might be tempted to do. I pray that you'll help us bring back to our memories the, the things that we have hidden in our hearts so that we can use them at the appropriate time. And I pray you'll be glorified in all that we do. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.